This is the exact editing formula that I use for every single one of my videos that is helping me grow so much every single day. And you're gonna learn exactly how I do it. So I heard that you wanna learn how to create short form content, short and snappy videos that you can use to put on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, overall to either promote your business, your personal brand, or maybe you're just having fun and wanna explore with new styles for your own personal social media. If you're any of those, you have come to the right place. My name is Mia, otherwise known online as Fluffy Socials. I am a full-time video editor, as well as being a videographer and podcast editor. But what makes most of my job up every single day is editing videos for myself and for my clients who honestly all do really different things. Ultimately, the one thing that it comes down to is video editing. Whether you have no interest in doing your video editing or it's something that you're really, really fascinated by but you have no idea how to make it look super edgy and super engaging like everything that you see online. In this video, I'm gonna give you a really in-depth walkthrough and tutorial of how I edit my videos on CapCut. The style of video that we're gonna edit together is what's known as a talking head, which I know sounds a little bit silly and crazy, but essentially it's what I'm doing right now. I'm talking to the camera. So you could be sitting down, you could be walking around, you could be doing anything. But to give you the overall vision, it's just you talking to the camera, which to some people might seem like it could be a really boring way to communicate with your audience, but it honestly doesn't have to be. Video editing should be fun. You should have fun while doing it. It's a way for you to explore your art and your creativity, especially if you're someone that's maybe a little bit on the shy side or feels like they don't show all of their personality through their voice. You can make up for this in editing by adding really fun text, overlays, stickers, transitions, animations, and of course sound effects. There's so much that you can do and I really want to simplify this for you. And after today, I guarantee that you will know exactly how to edit your own short form videos. So let's get into it. If you haven't already, download CapCut. That's what the app looks like. Slight disclaimer, and I am disappointed that I have to say this. If you want to use the captions or the subtitles feature, it used to be available for free, whereas now now it's only available for members that want to pay for pro. I pay for pro because I create a lot of content weekly for myself, for clients, and I use it all the time, so it's worth it. Whether you're weighing up downloading pro or not, some factors to decide if it's worth it for you. Are you going to be consistent with creating content? Are you creating a large volume of content? Is the type of content that you want to create, can that only specifically be done on CapCut? If the answer to all of that is yes, then I would advise it. Anyway, this video is not sponsored. I just wanted to give you the heads up. Now that that's sorted, Let's get into the editing. You can use the app on your phone to edit, which is really, really simple, really easy to use. Or you can download the desktop app, which in my opinion, I prefer because I like to see it on a bigger screen. But just so you know, you can do both. Step one is called a rough cut. This is where you're gonna upload all of the videos that you wanna use and then go through individually, getting rid of all of the pauses, the breaks in your sentence, any awkward silences, or anything that you say that's maybe a little bit boring or not relevant, and anything that you've repeated. So a little bit of fine tuning. The first thing that you need to do is open a new project, then drag and drop any clips or videos that you wanna use into your timeline. The only button that you're gonna have to press in this section for the rough cut is the split button. And essentially what that means is that you're gonna be putting a cut in the timeline. I always put a cut as soon as I finish my sentence and then I carry that out until my next sentence. So I essentially don't have any breaks between my sentences. But basically in this section, you wanna make sure that everything is perfect before you move on because it's gonna make every other step a lot easier once you know that your base is done and not gonna have to be touched up again. Although it's not a nightmare if it needs to be, so don't worry. And that's step one completed. Step two is probably one of my favorite elements to do when editing a video, which is adding keyframes. What's a keyframe? Keyframes are essentially a little trick that you can do that is really, really simple, that basically adds a little bit of dimension, a little bit of movement to your video. Especially great for videos where you're sitting down and you're talking to the camera and it's a little bit stagnant. You can use keyframes to kind of give you that zooming in or zooming out effect. Something I also like to incorporate is cropping one of my clips every so often. So I'll do a zoom, then a couple of clips later I'll do a crop and then a couple of clips later I'll do a zoom which basically is going to break your video up a lot more and make it a lot easier to consume for anyone that is viewing your content and that means that it's a lot less likely for your viewer to scroll away if they're getting bored. So because of all the constant soft movements most people consuming content don't even know it but that's what's keeping them engaged. The keyframe button looks like this and whether you're editing on your phone or your computer it is in different areas on your screen 
screen, so just keep an eye out for it. You need to make sure that your mouse, your cursor, you are clicked at the very beginning of that clip. Right beside the word transform, there's a little undo button and then there's a diamond and we want to click on the diamond. So that means that you're adding a keyframe. That's all you need to do for step one. Step two is going right to the end of that clip and you're adding another keyframe. Then you need to take yourself to the video preview up the top, click on the screen and zoom. The more that you zoom and pull the video out, the more dramatic and quick the zoom will be. And that's literally it. And that's step two done. The next step is to add your auto captions and any text that you want to include. Pre-warning, auto captions can be a little bit finicky sometimes, especially depending on the style that you want to create them in. There are templates for this that can make it a lot easier in terms of the format, how many words you want in each sentences, and to kind of have things flowing nicely. But I edit all of mine manually because I have a font that I go by every single time. And honestly, I just really like to have control because sometimes the templates can glitch and then you end up having some sentences where the words aren't correct or it completely misses portions of what you're saying. Without further ado, let's go into it. To access the auto captions feature, you need to go into the text button. Auto captions, as soon as you're ready, press go. Instantly, it's gonna bring up all of your captions on your timeline. You'll notice the first thing that I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm extending all of the gap because sometimes on the computer, I find that it glitches a little bit. The sentences don't actually continue for as long as I'm speaking. The next thing I do is to click on the first caption, which will then bring up in the right-hand corner all of your captions. So I'm going through, clicking on each caption that I want to edit, going to the end of the sentence and pressing the enter key on my laptop. And then that's going to create a break in the sentence and make it its own new sentence. Once that's all done, you can finally have fun and edit your text. This is where you can change your font. You can change the color of it. You can add an outline, you can add a background. What I'm doing in this section is adding some additional text. So I do a title at the beginning of the video, which I added the typing effect to, which is my absolute favorite effect. And you can alter the length of this so that it kind of can either appear really, really quickly or really slowly. So for me, I like to have it, yeah, coming out slowly. Have a final listen through, double check everything, and then you're ready to move on to the next step. Step three, completed. You can probably see what I mean that it's like a little bit finicky because I manually break up all my words into their own sentences because I don't want them to look really large and clunky. Otherwise I would have like really, really long sentences, especially because my text is slightly big. I definitely want to make sure it's either one or two words max for my subtitles. Everyone does this differently. You could have your subtitles really, really tiny in like a different font that's all lowercase. And then you could have multiple words in your sentences and it won't actually look that clunky. It's just because of the style that I create mine in. And with adding little bits of text, I don't do this all the time. I think it definitely depends on the type of video that I do. But I do think if you're starting out on a new journey of creating content for your business or your personal brand, I think it does always help to have at least a title or some sort of reference to what the video is about. The way that TikTok, Instagram and YouTube works is that they have really, really smart systems and algorithms to pick up what you're saying. So it's basically another opportunity for you to be able to use keywords that are to do with your video, to do with your niche, your business, whatever, that will hopefully mean that people will find you sooner and more frequently. And one final piece of advice when it comes to text on your videos, try and remember how this is gonna look when you're posting this on TikTok and Instagram. When you're looking at it on the desktop, the text can look really big, but on a phone, it's always gonna look smaller. So something I always recommend to the clients that I work with, make your text and your subtitles as small as you are comfortable with them being, because nine times out of 10, you'll post the video, then look at it on your phone and realize that it actually looks really large. And to put it nicely, it might just end up looking a little bit unesthetic, a little bit unclean to someone who's watching your video. They might just scroll away because maybe there's just too much going on. More food for thought. I'm really excited to show you this next one because it's honestly definitely my favorite element. I think it makes such a difference to literally any video, no matter what you're doing. So let's get started. In the top left corner, click on the audio section to click on the sound effects button. Go through all the trending ones. You can search for a sound effect. For me, I've got a full Folder of favorites that I always go to and know that I use every single time. As soon as you find the sound effect that you want to use, drag and drop it onto the timeline. So the sound effects always go underneath your video. I always zoom into my timeline really, really deeply so that I can see the exact point of where I'm adding my sound effect. And I always turn my sound effects volume down. They're normally quite loud. Some of my favorite sounds to use, clicks, pops, typing. Always try and do it in a spot where it actually makes sense. We're so close to being finished. You could finish at this point, it's totally up to 
to you. But the next optional step that I think always adds like a little bit of something is an overlay. What's an overlay? Basically, it's you adding either a photo or a video, some sort of piece of content on top of the video that you're already editing. It could be a video of you talking to the camera. It could be some B-roll videos of what you do day to day. It could be a screen recording of something that you want to show on your phone. Or it could literally just be some sort of screenshot. Say if you want to show a message that someone sent you or a screenshot of some sort of like financial figures. It's such an underrated but really, really valuable thing to do for your videos because it's going to make your audience feel so much more connected and have a deeper understanding of what you're actually talking about because it's something visual to look at. Also, I'm going to keep banging the same drum. It's going to keep it engaging. Attach it in an area where you've got a sound effect or add a new sound effect that works like something that swooshes in or swooshes out. And you can also animate your overlays so you can have them sliding in, fading in, fading out. There's an insane amount of variety when it comes to choosing animations. You'll more than likely find one that you will love and want to stick to time and time again. An overlay on the computer is pretty simple. All you need to do is drag and drop the video, the screenshot, whatever it is that you want to use on top of your timeline. Move the video or the photo to wherever it is that you want to use. You can split and cut this however you need to, but I just wanna use a tiny portion just for a little bit of clarity on the point that I'm making. And then make sure that it runs perfectly. I have the text on top and that's all I do. For adding screenshots or overlays of text is the exact same. But one thing that you can do with overlays is to add animations, which you can access once you click on the overlay. And then in the right hand corner beside video, you're gonna see the word animation. There's honestly so many options to choose and I have the most fun doing this. So I think you will too. You can stop here, but if you want to know some more things that you can add, let's dive into those. You could play around with color grading and I'm putting color grading in quotation marks because it's really not that serious. It's kind of like, I don't know that much about color grading, but in CapCut, you have the option to create presets where you can edit the saturation of certain colors or make it brighter, lower down the highlights. So it's a really fun tool to play around with depending on where you're filming, what your style is, what you want it to look like, or you can just leave it clean if you want something that looks fresh, crisp, and a bit more relaxed. I have a preset that I use all the time when I'm filming on my camera, which basically brightens up the greens and the pinks. Another element you could play around with is adding transitions. Personally, for my own content, it's not something I do or feel like I need to do, but if you feel like your video is like a little bit stagnant or maybe you're pulling clips from a podcast, transitions can be really good for that so that it moves really smoothly into the next clip. Another element that you can do is add music directly in the CapCut app. This is good if you're doing talking videos and you want to have some, you know, plinky plonky background music and not have to worry about doing it in app, on Instagram, TikTok, shorts, anything like that. I use it a lot for myself and for my clients, but most of the videos that I post on my social media daily, I choose all of the music that I want to use in app. A recommendation that is really, really important to remember, if you're going to upload a video where you're talking to the camera, turn down the added sound as much as you can. Normally, I have it turned to like two, three, four out of 100 because otherwise you'll find that you've posted a video where the music is so loud no one can really hear you speaking and it sounds overwhelming stressful and way too much so i'm scrolling away when it comes to editing a short form video that is all i'm doing you now know everything the final thing that you need to do is export it and this is a really important element to remember so that your video quality remains really really crisp and clear and good sometimes you might find if you've uploaded videos to instagram tiktok shorts in the past as soon as you post it, the video quality looks really, really bad. The reason that that happens is because apps like that basically compress the video quality down so that it's in line with their guidelines. A lot of the time, if you're filming on a 4K camera or an iPhone, that's gonna be recording in 4K. So then if you export your video in 4K, you upload your video in 4K, Instagram and TikTok are gonna be like, no, for resolution, make sure that that is on 180p. That is what's gonna make it in line with short form video content platforms and then press export and that is your video done. So now you know how to make a video of you talking to the camera or doing something like really, really engaging, fun and creative. This is the exact formula that I use for every single one of my videos that is helping me grow so much every single day. Thank you so much for watching. This is my first video in a very, very long series of a brand new YouTube content strategy for myself. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about how 
you can make coming up with ideas, planning your content, and creating a stress-free content strategy that actually works, as well as showing you some behind the scenes of my life as a full-time video editor, just showing you what I get up to every now and then. Please make sure if you have any questions, put them in a comment below, I'll answer everyone, and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see some more. I really hope this helped you, but I also hope that you are super excited to start creating your own content, content that you're proud of. See you next time.